Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com and today I'll be breaking down five ways that you can start making money as a beginner photographer. Now, I promise that this isn't yet another clickbait list. I actually spent a lot of time reflecting on the things that I wish I approached differently over the last 15 years of working as a professional photographer and video producer. If you still don't believe me, you can have a look at the full list of concepts that I'm going to cover in this video up on screen. So the first way to make money as a beginner photographer is to shoot high volume photography. Now, what do I mean by high volume photography? I'm referring to the types of photography that are easily repeatable and don't take up a lot of your time. A couple of examples of high volume photography include real estate, sports, or any type of concert or corporate event. All of these things can be shot in a couple of hours to a full day at most, and there's usually not a ton of editing involved. Now, some of you are probably thinking that doesn't make any sense. You have to deal with more clients and you can't charge as much money. But for a beginner, high volume photography is a lot easier to start off with. For for three reasons. Reason number one, scheduling is a lot easier. If you're truly a beginner, then you're probably working a day job or you're a student or you're doing something else to pay the bills. And if you're in that situation, scheduling an event shoot for a couple of hours is a lot easier than getting involved with a three day corporate project or something else where you need to consistently be available. When I first started out, I tried taking on the biggest jobs that I could find and it was a mistake. I would literally end up using vacation time at my day job to clear up my schedule schedule for these huge projects. And trust me, you will burn out quickly if you try to do this. Reason number two, your portfolio will expand much more quickly. There are very few barriers to shooting something like a real estate listing because you can do it in under an hour and there are thousands of properties that are constantly for sale. Whereas if you try to shoot a wedding, yes, you do end up making more money, but there's significantly more work involved before, during, and after the event. And as a result of all your hard work, you only end up with one new portfolio piece. If your goal is to quickly build up a variety of different examples that you can use to generate future business, then high volume photography will take much less time and effort. And reason number three, once the property is sold or the game is over or the event has ended, that's it. Your clients can't ask you to redo it like they could after a set of headshots or family portraits. This means that the result of your work is very compartmentalized. Either you did a good job or a bad job, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Moving on, the second way to make money as a beginner photographer is to over overcome your fear of judgment. Now, before I say anything else, have a look at the first tutorial video that I ever shot when I started building Speedy Photographer. It's tough to be a photographer these days. Clients and audiences are demanding more than ever before, and you have to keep up not only with what they need. So just looking back on this clip, I'm not feeling confident about how I delivered lines or even how I sound. And now because of that, I'm gonna waste time adjusting my shirt. Now I'm going to adjust my shirt again. Now I'm going to do it a third time because why not? And now finally I'm going to attempt the line again. It's tough to be a photographer these days. That is a very different, very introverted version of me. I was not comfortable with the camera. I was not confident sharing my knowledge and I was way too concerned with what other people thought of me and my photography. And all that did was slow me down. It took me a full year after recording that clip in 2019 to release my first video on YouTube in 2020 and eventually launch my online photography school, Speedy Photographer. I could have done all of that a lot earlier if I had just been able to overcome that fear of judgment. And I had similar experiences with starting my photography business. I can tell you that comparing myself to others and worrying about what they thought was paralyzing. I wasted hours of my life scrolling through Instagram and wondering how is my work going to be perceived by these other creative people? And that's time which should have been spent marketing myself to potential clients. Like I said, I do understand creative people tend to be introverted, but the truth is you don't need to impress anybody except for the people that pay you. Because if you're working in a high volume photography niche, like I just suggested, and your clients are happy with the work you're delivering, then you've created an easy opportunity for repeat jobs and new referrals. Don't waste your time with anything else. Now, the third way to make money as a beginner photographer is to monetize your knowledge. The best way for me to explain this is to share a popular business story known as the handyman's invoice. You might be familiar with it, but hear me out for 20 seconds. In the story, Nikola Tesla visits Henry Ford at his factory, which is having some kind of problem. Ford asks Tesla to identify the problem. So Tesla walks up to a wall of boilerplate and he draws a small X on one of the plates. Simple enough, right? But when the invoice comes in, the bill is for $10,000. $1 for drawing an X and $9,999 for knowing where to draw it. 
This made up story is a very simplified way of explaining what it means to monetize your knowledge. A lot of photographers fall into the trap of thinking that the work they do is worth less than it actually is. And as I said earlier, I have been shooting professionally for over a decade, but I am still guilty of doing this today. And there is a subconscious reason that we do this. It's because everyone, amateurs, professionals, people who know nothing about photography, everyone likes to focus on the gear. When curious people come up to me while I'm working at an event, they usually say, what a nice camera where they ask, what lens is that? And people don't mean any harm by doing this, but it devalues your work as a photographer because it implies that the gear is doing the heavy lifting. But photography is not just you pushing a button. You're doing it with purpose by combining your knowledge of color, lighting, composition, camera settings, and everything else to produce the best possible picture in that moment. And you need to remember that when you're pricing your work. If anybody could do it with an iPhone, then you wouldn't have a job. Not only that, but you need to consider how your knowledge is creating value for your clients. A lot of the time, your skill set as a photographer will make a massive difference in helping somebody to market what they do. But despite this, just to give you an example, I constantly see budget real estate photographers charging $99 a shoot. Now, real estate agents in North America America, Canada, the United States, they typically charge about a 2.5% commission. That's $25,000 on a million dollar property. When you take that into consideration, do you really think that your photography is only worth $99 a shoot? If you wanna make money when you're first starting out, you need to constantly challenge yourself by asking these questions. And if the client is too cheap to recognize the value of your knowledge, then politely move on and know your worth. That is how you'll be able to monetize your work most effectively. So we're about halfway through this video and if you found it helpful, I thought I would politely ask if you could like and subscribe to my channel, it would be greatly appreciated. Now, the fourth way to make money as a beginner photographer is to diversify your income. Most entrepreneurs like to share this common piece of advice, not only because, well, obviously it can increase your income, but because it provides you with security. If one source of income fails, then you have another one to fall back on. And more importantly, this means that you can be a lot more patient and avoid underpaid work. Just to share my own personal examples, my income can be broken down into four four different sources, my photography business, my online photography school, my YouTube channel, and my affiliate sales. But that isn't an exhaustive list. Some other common ways to diversify your income include stock photography, developing your own products or presets, and even brand partnerships. I'll admit that some of these are a bit tougher to do when you don't have a following, but it should give you an idea as to what you should be considering. Not only that, but part of diversifying your income also involves diversifying your skills. Not only do I shoot photography, but I also shoot video and I do basic web development. I've had a lot of projects start out with the client asking me to take pictures and then offering future opportunities shooting video and helping them with content distribution. And if I didn't have some of these skills which are closely related to photography, I would be leaving thousands of dollars on the table each year. So I strongly encourage you to learn some of those skills that might not be exactly what you're passionate about, but ultimately they can lead to more work and help to diversify your income. Finally, the fifth way to make money as a beginner photographer is to suggest what your client needs. This is especially important when you're a beginner because you probably don't have a list of clients and you have to put more work into marketing yourself. And the easiest way to market yourself is to identify a problem that you can help to solve. For example, as this YouTube channel has grown, I've started to receive a lot of emails from companies and other photographers offering to work with me. But those emails usually focus on why they want to work with me and not why I should want to work with them. So unless they want to pay me, that doesn't really give me much motivation to respond. Whereas some of the most effective emails that I receive are from people who point out something that I have have a problem with and then offer me some kind of solution. Recently, I had someone reach out to me and point out how I could improve the captions on one of my Instagram posts for a soccer game I covered. But unlike most of the emails I get, this one actually piqued my interest because A, it showed that the person had done their research by reviewing some of my latest work and B, it provided me with an immediate upfront solution to something I was actively doing poorly. And while I didn't respond to that person, by the way, I'm really sorry if you're out there and watching this video, you can learn a lot from structuring your client emails in a similar way. Don't just point out that you're a photographer in the area looking for new opportunities. There are dozens of other people who can do that. Spend the time researching their business, provide value upfront, and you'll find that people are much more likely to respond. Let me explain what I mean by providing value upfront. Back in 2015, I submitted a bunch of professional pictures that I took at a local soccer game to the league manager. And I knew that eventually I wanted to work with them, but I told the league manager, here you go free pictures, use these for your marketing campaigns or your website or whatever you want. And by the way, 
I do this for a living if you ever want to hire me. And guess what? About a year later, they reached out and they offered me a $3,000 contract to shoot more promotional content for them. And they did that because I provided them with value up front and I showed them how and what I could contribute to their marketing efforts. If I just sent a cold email and I told them I wanted to work with them, I never would have landed that job. So those are the five ways that you can make money today as a beginner photographer. There are many other strategies that can help you to make money as a photographer, good website design, pricing strategies, and of course, knowing how to take professional quality images that actually sell. And I talk about all of this inside of Speedy Photographer, the fastest and easiest way to learn photography, where you can join hundreds of my other students in building that knowledge and those skills that can monetize your work. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh. <laughs>